Hello again now. What happens over there eventually, of course, usually happens over here on this beautiful Isle of Man. So, as the NHS across the way 111 call system this past week has seen an over 60% increase in call numbers to the service, the local med service increased call numbers by 68%, and it is still rising. If you are waiting a ring back, and exceptional calls notwithstanding, obviously very urgent ones, etc., just forgive us, please, if there's a slight increase in wait time. The recent set of winter items now being added to by circulating cases of flu. Australia had a difficult summer, of course, going to our winter, with type A flu, as one might expect. And that then to lots of very hot and feverish young children, many complaining of a sore throat, norovirus associated vomiting, ongoing bronchitis and chest infections in huge numbers in children and adults. Not too forgetting the not going away anytime soon COVID disease. The UK Health Security Agency by last week reporting at that point 74 deaths, including 16 children, from invasive strep A, strep A infections amongst nearly 8,000 notified cases of scarlet fever. Locally, we are getting information concerning which pharmacy has got what and approximate stocks of this or that various antibiotics a couple of times a week now. Meds often dispense in this stuff itself, and if necessary, outside pharmacy opening hours, it'll do that, issuing prescriptions at other times. Again and again, it's the little ones making the waves there. Nearly three years of relative virus free existence through COVID, but boy oh boy, are they making it up for it now. As you often say, the respiratory virus is circulating, and they don't queue up in orderly fashion. Oh, it's your turn. No, oh, no, it's my turn yesterday, it's your turn. <laughs> No, several can inhabit your airways, your nose, your throat, your lungs, all at the same time. Have a jolly good time run about it. Often resulting in a continuous runny nose, a cough, blocked ears, jippy tummy. Scarlet fever has its own dynamic, of course, its own acronym. S. Sore throat. Occasionally at younger tids, not very apparent, actually. C. C. Circumoral pallor. The pale ring around the lips contrasting with the red cheeks as the rash appears. A. Anticubical fossa. What's that? Well, the front bit of your elbow below the biceps areas. The spreading rash looking a bit like sunburn producing lines of marked redness in the creases of these regions. So-called patia lines. Essentially tiny blood vessels which are ruptured, broken, that may last then several days after the scarlet fever rash has gone. Why an Italian pudding, typically eaten at Easter, gets its 50 minutes of fame, I don't know. R for rash. The sandpaper like to feel rash, often again like sunburn, it's there, spreading from face to chin to chest to neck and occasionally all over, lobster-like. L for lymph nodes, those swollen lymph glands we usually find in the neck. E, wow, a bit nebulous this one. Erythrogenic toxin. This is the toxin that produces all the effects of invasive strep A infections from sepsis to pneumonia, bone or joint infections to severe skin infections, later arriving as nephritis or even later rheumatic fever. Years ago, it was not uncommon for children, weeks after seemingly recovering, fully from a strep infection that hadn't been treated with antibiotics, or didn't need it at the time or they weren't available, develop cola or beer-coloured urine caused by inflammation of the kidneys, glomerulonephritis or nephritis for short. Occasionally, too, they would continue to be unwell. X, usually again on treated infection, go on to develop swollen, painful joints, headaches, persistent fever, chest pains. We used to have this thing called the Jones Criteria, long forgotten or never learned by junior doctors. <laughs> Involving the necessary presences of things like recent strep infection, painful swollen joints that flitted about from one to the other, and this really weird thing called Sydenham's career that could affect up to a quarter of cases of rheumatic fever. This sort of odd jerking movements, like a very slow spasm of the face or muscles or arms or legs, it was a bit weird, I have to say. Signs of inflammation of the heart, particularly the valves, carditis, with a changing heart murmur from day to day. Odd lumps under the skin, so-called rheumatic nodules. 
This weird rash, unlike scarlet fever, though, uh, it had sharp edges, so-called, well, erythema marginatum, it was called, to be bosh. In the past, the damaged heart valves often ending up permanently damaged, later needing surgery to correct the damage. New valves, mainly the mitral valve. I've personally overseen rheumatic fever twice in my professional workings, so it is rare. In today's world of often just in case antibiotics, that might quell any strain bacteria lurking. Having said that, I've only seen diphtheria and acute tetanus once each. Oh Lord, though, once was quite enough, thank you. Horrible and thankfully in our local neck of the woods, well covered within the routine child immunisation programmes. So we keep going, dealing with all this stuff and it's a mass of it. Community farmers must be exhausted by now as I'm sure the constant pressure to dispense will take its toll. Please try and be patient. I know it's difficult sometimes. It might not seem like we care. We really do. It's just sheer number of volume of cases. I'll keep them informed, though, of any items you might need to know about as this week crawls into the Christmas weekend. Until then, cheerio.